Okay, so now we've opened the drawing. I see that my, my IPN has changed because this part moved back. Uh, one thing that you want to make sure of is if there are any trail files, um, trail lines, they are a double dash chain like this, a phantom line style. So if you don't want it, just take off visibility. It's very evident to me that goes straight in that hole. So you can right click and take off visibility. So what we're going to do right here is uh, we're going to take off revision one. We're not in prototype phase anymore. We could have revisions one through 20. We're going to take all those off and replace them with Rev A. So I'm going to double click on this backspace and put an A in here. And over here, I'm going to replace this incorporate per ECO. And the ECO number is right here, 1433. Just copy that. 1433 Every ECO will have its own particular number. The date of incorporation is today's date, so 7 18 And apply. So I'm going to go ahead and add another row. We have an ECO Rev B to incorporate in the same drawing and we're going to do it all at one time. So if I right click on this, I can insert a row. And uh, I'm going to put Rev B in here. So if I look at Rev B, it's incorporate per ECO team 33-something. What's a Rev B ECO number? Let's see. Here's Rev A. Uh, 41710? Yeah, 41710 Okay, so we've got that. And then I'm going to put the same date because I'm incorporating both of them today. So I'm going to apply that and say okay. So we never leave revisions one or any numeric revisions up here. At this point, we're releasing for tooling. So when we release for tool, we're going to go you even have to release for tooling with an ECO saying that you're releasing for tooling. And that documentation will follow that to manufacturing. So if we look at these, all of our parts stay the same. All of our, all this stays the same. You don't have to do anything on here. But one thing that does worry me is that there is no ASME standard node on here. So we're going to have to put it in there. And we can copy it and paste it from another uh, drawing. Um, interpret per East, I'm sorry, per ASME Y fourteen point five dash two thousand nine. So we need that note so that it covers the entire drawing and all the all the dimensions. Okay, on the next sheet, everything that's in pink is what has disappeared. It's lost its references. So what I'm going to do, this is for that .375 hole that was there. That goes away. We added, and I'm going to take this out, that, that center mark. We added these two holes. This is for the dovetail. So I'm going to delete these out. Now we added these holes and they don't have center marks. So I have to select on all three of these, right click and automated center lines and make sure that I get my circular pattern, my cylinders, my revolves. Somebody didn't set all that up in this document to start with. So we'll say okay. So now we have that, but how are we gonna dimension these holes in the back? We need another view. So what I'm going to do is move these down and I'm going to add a view. So if I right click and say project view and I'll put the backside view here and say create. Well it doesn't have any hidden lines. Why would that be? Because this doesn't have hidden lines. We don't have hidden lines in section views. It was projected from that and it's styled from the base view that it's projected from. So check this out. Everybody heads up. 
right click on this and edit the view right here is your style from base option if you deselect that you can say hey I want hidden lines on this one but not on this one right and there they come in so once again I'm gonna right click on this and automated center lines for all the things that I wanted before and now I need to dimension these two holes so I'm gonna put in a hole and thread note here I'm gonna select on the visible line if I double click on this take off use default and go to the very first of that I can put the quantity node in there and it will automatically put a 2x space in there for me so if I want to retrieve dimensions of this feature there's a 0.5 on each side I'm going to select this dimension and apply only and then I'm going to bring this center mark out to show that these are right in line with the center of the part and I'm going to put a 2x on this. So if I go to text and I go to the home button, I'm going to put a 2x space and say OK. So now I've updated this. Um, did this update? All this updated for me automatically. And all the rest of it's the same. Now in my ECO, on the very last sheet of Rev A, this changes to 531. It was a typo. So I'm going to change that in there. Nothing changes to this. All the rest of this is the same. And now we're going to go to sheet 3. So now, look what happened. If I move this view, and I move this view up and down, can I? Can I move this? Can I move this view up and down? Okay, those are in line. So what I'd like to do is I have to have this view because of the hole right here in the in the center. But I don't have to have this diameter. I don't have to have this. Those are all wrong now. I need this diameter and I can put this here and switch this over here. Right click and options and take the arrowheads outside. So that's pretty nice. Maybe I want to reorient this view. So let's figure out this view right here is the parent of this view but notice that they're in line. So if I select this one and I right click and I say edit the view and let's say I want to rotate it around like that. Maybe I want to change the scale. Maybe I make this scale three fourths. That looks pretty good and I'll say okay. Be very careful when you change the scale because of this down here. So now I have to go down here and change this to three quarter. Okay, so what happened to this? I thought this was a child of this. They're not, they were just aligned. That is not a child. That was not projected from this view. So I'm going to delete this sucker. And I'm going to bring this over here. And I'm going to put these dimensions in again. So if I select on this view, right click and project a view and put this down here and create the only thing that I need this for is this hole so now I'm going to do automated center lines say ok now look at this one this center line stopped right here because this hole didn't used to go all the way through there so we need to pull that through and now I'm going to retrieve the dimensions of this part. So retrieve dimensions, this, I want both of them. So I can just draw a box around them. I want the dimensions of this view on this. And I want to select that dimension. And uh, let's just do select the parts. Select the view, select the part. And let's get everything that we need. So we need the three quarter inch long threads, the 0.38 diameter here, which I can pull down here, the three inches long, that's 0.75, this is 1.23, and I think that's it. So uh, I'm going to apply that. Now I can pull these out. <coughs> Now 
the one thing that it did not pull out was my chamfers so I want to pull that out come on come out here pull out the 0.48 and feel your pain 0.48 if you bring that into the middle you can bring this down in here and flip your arrowheads the other way and then bring these all into alignment now what we were talking about uh, before you guys got here was that the chamfers need to go on after the thread because the thread is measured from the end of the part not from the end of the chamfer and it will make it dimension from the end of the chamfer so we could put a 2x on that we got this diameter we need the diameter of the shaft so if I measure from here to here and pull that out put in a diameter symbol and I'm going to put 2x or you could put continuous feature on this because both of those shafts are interrupted by the centerpiece so we have this and then I can flip these arrows options arrows bring this one options arrowheads outside so now that brings that inside that makes it all really nice and then I'll do that to the same thing so I've got these now I'm going to show you guys something uh, different hauling thread note now we this is the first time we've had an external thread and that was created in a different way if I do a hole in thread node and I select on this side of the thread and this side of the thread, it comes in like a diameter, which is really nice, instead of pointing with a leader to it. So um, I'm going to double click on this and just put a 2x on this. So some of these you have to go to text, home, 2x space, and I have these in there. And all I need now is this diameter of this hole. and I think that's it so now I have this part I've got the scale created I've got these these things this thing changed um, this diameter of 0.82 is not going to be here anymore this I don't know why that's right there um, so I need a backside view of this so that I can dimension that um, that diameter so I have to add a new view so I'm going to say um, create a new view, project geometry over here. In the ECO, it shows you that this is a section view. I'm not going to make you go back and change that view to a section view. It makes no sense to me. There's nothing that the section view does for us. So don't worry about that if it uh, requires it on the ECO. I'm going to go to automated center lines. Okay, so now I'm going to put that counter bore right here. So holding thread notes on this one. Put that wherever you can. And that should actually that should do it for all these. So that that uh, pretty much covers everything for revision A. So now I'm going to save the drawing. And when it asks if you want to save everything, say yes to all because something may have been updated and I'm going to say okay.